welcome this is the homework solution for the sequence 1.11 solutions for the ready set go what we have here is the ready part it asks us to describe the similarities and differences between the linear equation and the arithmetic sequence so what i have here is the arithmetic sequence is on my left hand side on my right hand side it's my linear equation notice just looking visually at it they basically look like they're growing the same okay so aka they have this thing called the slope they have the same rate of change next they sort of will look exactly the same on the same graph they will look the same on the same graph so look they're both going up right because their slope is positive here's the difference do you see how these are all dots because they're all dots we call this word discrete that means there is only finite answers, right? Like there's an answer for one, there's an answer for two, there's an answer for three. But a linear equation, we would call that continuous. The reason why it's continuous is because of this line. It goes on forever. It has an answer at one. It also has an answer at two. But it also has an answer at 1.5. It has an answer at one half. It has an answer at 3.14. Linear equations are continuous, so they have almost an infinite possible solution. Okay, so that is the difference. The arithmetic sequence has finite or discrete solutions, but the linear equation has continuous solutions, so it's infinite. Next, let's look at the set part. Using the in given information to complete uh, the other representation for each of the arithmetic sequence, all right? So here, uh, for your 1.11, you would notice that you, they asked you for the recursive and the explicit, okay? So here's the, and also for the context. I have the table, so what I did is I graphed it. Once I graphed it, I found that my common difference here was 8. It's going up by 8 to each time. So there it is, okay? My looks like my y-intercept here is zero so right here it would be zero here for the y-intercept and the slope here it looks like it's going up eight eight times so the m is eight so my example is every single day mr s spends eight dollars on lunch by the fourth day he spends a total of 32 dollars on lunch so far first day eight second day 16 dollars third day 24 fourth day is 32 all right so the next one number three here number three asks us the same thing it's asking both for the recursive and the um it gives us the recursive and the explicit it asks us to give the table and to write the context okay all right so i have the equation i have the equation so i have to fill in the chart so i plug in values into here okay so i could even show you it if you would like to see Okay, so if I plug in zero, all right, if I plug in zero for x, right, what is my y? It looks like my y would be equal to three plus zero is zero, so it should be one. Do you see that? Zero and y is equal to one. Let's see, I plug in one, right? Three times one is three plus one, so three times one is... 3 plus 1 is equal to 4, right? Do you see that? I fill in that chart, and then I graphed it. I would say here, Aaron has $1 in his wallet. He earns $3 for every single chore he does around the house. So, 0 chores, he has $1. 1 chore, he has 4. 2 chores, he has 7. So on and so on. Okay. Next, we curse, uh, next, 4. Uh, it gives us the explicit, right? It asks us for the recursive, creating the content, as well as the chart and the graph. So from here, y equals 5x minus 1. Very beautiful because it already gives us it in y equals mx plus b format. Okay, or I made it there. So I plug it into my chart like before. To generate my values. I graphed it. And here is my scenario. Mary is running a race. She starts one mile behind because that is the minus 1. The lead runner but runs at five miles per hour faster to catch up do you see how she's one mile behind the leader at one hour she's already four miles ahead then she's nine miles ahead at two hours here's the graph visually number five 
It gives us the scenario. Janet wants to know how many seats are there at it in each row of the theater. Jamie. Janet. Let her know that each row has two seats more than the row in front of it. The first row has 14. Very beautiful here. Each row has two seats more than the row in front of it. And that would be your uh, rate of change or your common ratio, your common difference or your slope. The first row has 14 seats, which is going to be represented as the y-intercept. So you plug it in. So you could write this in y equals mx plus b if you want. Um, right? Okay. So in our case, oop, this shouldn't be miles. This should be row and this should be seat. All right, so the first row has 14 seats, second row 16, so on, so on. Here's the graph, right? Goes from here, goes up, okay? This, you wouldn't write zero row, right? Because the zero row wouldn't make sense in the context of this problem, right? So here's your explicit, then that is your recursive, right? Because two is your common difference. Here's the go part. The go part, it says, given the recursive equation for each arithmetic sequence, write the explicit equation. All right, so here we go. We have the first term. Then we also have the explicit equation. So what I did is I found the I found the y-intercept value, right? Because to get it into y equals mx plus b, okay? So in explicit, the first term here is 8 minus 2 because that is the common difference times the previous term. This is arithmetic, right? Yeah. Good? Good. Because again, it is 2 because the first term is 8. Here it is this term. This is the common difference right there. Okay, that is why the common difference is there as well. Common difference or slope is right there, negative 2. Next one, 5 plus the um, previous term. The first term is zero. So here, <coughs> the first term here is zero. The common difference here is five. So five times the previous term or putting that in equals y plus b format is y equals five x minus five. Okay, because again, the common ratio here is five. Okay, uh, that would be five. Uh, here we go. This looks like your function is just equal to your previous function. That's how you re read it. Function is equal to previous function. If the first function is 5 over 3, what do you think the next value for the function is? 5 over 3. You just plug in 5 over 3. All right. Just the previous term. Okay. So f of n is just your previous term, which is just... All right. What's the previous term? 5 over 3. So it would look like y is equal to 5 over 3. All right, there you go. That is your homework solution for the 1.11.